All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, it looks like it's nine o'clock, so we will go ahead and begin our um, Fridays with Fiscal session today. Um, and we are going to talk about the STRS advance. So I'm sure that calls and questions have started to, to you know, come in and we're hoping this morning to go through um, each of the three reports that the districts are gonna be running I mean, kind of um, take a deeper dive into those and, um, you know, talk about each part and where those figures are coming from and maybe some balancing tools to help um, the districts along the way. So hopefully by the end of the day, um, if you had questions as far as, you know, where does where are these totals coming from and and how's the system arriving at those, um, you'll be able to take this presentation along with what we're talking about and um, um, understand that a little better. So first, when we talk about the STRS advance, um, you know, why do we even, why does STRS even require this? So I had to chuckle a little bit because um, some of you may remember way back many years ago, STRS actually required districts to front the money to them um, that they were going to, the districts were going to be um, paying on those summer pays um, ahead of time. And then actually as the STRS advance was processed, um, those funds um, that were withheld from the employees' checks were actually paid back to the board and not um, sent to STRS. So just a little fun fact that um, I happened to, you know, kind of take a walk down memory lane and as I was thinking about the advance in this time of year. So um, when that happened, I know lots of us were excited and thought, hey, that means the advance is going away. Um, but unfortunately, you know, many years later, we're still here and we're still, you know, processing the advance, um, just maybe um, in a little bit different manner than what um, it was years ago. Um, before I get started, go any further, if you guys have any questions at any time, please interrupt me. Um, feel free to place them in the chat. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat. I'm not always the best at doing that. So please interrupt me at any time and I'll be happy to address your questions. Um, so again, getting back to why um, we have to, you know, worry about the advance to begin with. Um, STRS actually requires um, the contributions to be reported to them when they are earned, not when they're paid. So, you know, Throughout the school year, um, teachers and um, STRS employees, um, you know, are earning probably more than what they're being paid because that's being stretched over those summer pays. So when they're not working, they're still receiving a paycheck. So the, by the end of the school year, those, you know, earnings have already been earned. So STRS requires those to be reported to them in the correct fiscal year. So, you know, the first pay in July, we're going to start roll over into a new fiscal year, and those contributions then are being sent to STRS. So, you know, rolling into fiscal year 24, um, districts are going to process those um, per pay submission files. Those contributions then need to be applied to last fiscal year. Um, so again, when they are earned, not when they are paid. So that's kind of the premise behind, um, you know, the whole STRS advance. And um, STRS needs to know then what fiscal year those contributions apply to. Okay. So basically there are three different reports that districts are going to, you know, be running to help them um, get through their, their fiscal year end and get the, that information properly reported to STRS. The very first report that a district is gonna want to run is the non-advanced positions report. So I encourage, you know, and you've probably all had your year in meetings now, and you've probably, as I mentioned, probably started fielding questions already, but 
it is very, very important before it's too late that districts run, especially this report now. So if it's caught um, and there are, you know, all of their teachers or the majority of the um, certified staff is listed on this non-advanced position report, there are ways to um, sort of mass correct that um, instead of going individually, you know, employee by employee and having to, to correct that information. So again, strongly encourage your employee or your districts um, to run the non-advanced report now. Um, and the criteria then that goes into, you know, why an employee would be listed on the report, um, we've outlined those in the bullets on your screen. So basically the employee has to have a position with the retirement code set to STRS. The position status has to be active or inactive. Um, and there also must be a contract compensation for the position, okay? So legacy, we you know used to include legacy compensations because those were the ones that came over from classic. Um, yay, fortunately we don't have to worry about that part anymore. So. Um, they strictly need to be that contract compensation type. Um, they also have to have a contract compensation date range that falls within the current year. The pays paid on the compensation must be less than um, um, the pays in the contract. So there has to be a remaining um, you know, pays to be paid and the compensation um, work days uh, must be greater than zero. The key part then to the non-advanced position report is that the work contract work days will not equal the contract days worked um, by June 30th. So the system is smart enough to know that if, if you know a district has only processed maybe one pay in June and their um, period ending date for that pay in June is um, not through June 30th. Um, the system is smart enough to know, take that last pay that's been processed on the system, take that period ending date, go out to the employee's job calendar and count the remaining number of work days from you know, that last pay period ending date, you know, the day following that through June 30th. So the total of those um, that the system arrives at, you know, will not equal the contract days, I'm sorry, work days um, by June 30th. So keep in mind that if, if you have, you know, a district that has several, several, several employees listed, um, there's probably a good chance that, that there's a problem. There should be very few employees listed on this report. Um, good examples are superintendents, um, principals, um, possibly supplementals. So again, you know, if their contracts are not fulfilled by June 30th and they're working in the summer months, July, um, then those um, employees would be listed on the non-advanced re positions report and those would be correct. Um, when it comes to things like supplementals, you know, different districts handle those differently. So you can't always say, you know, supplementals should or should not be listed on that report. Um, they, uh, I'm sorry, was there a question? Oh, okay. I think it got answered. I'm sorry. Um, so a good rule of thumb with the supplementals is, you know, or any questions, reach out to STRS. Um, you know, they're going to be able to give you a definitive, or the district, a definitive answer as to whether those positions should be advancing or not advancing. Um, and, you know, they're, they have the final say. So encourage your districts to reach out to STRS for those answers. You know, lots of times they're going to give the, the response you know, how has it been done in the past? Be consistent. Those are the words that you hear um, pretty regularly. But again, reach out to, you know, STRS for the, that ruling. Okay. 
So here's what the non-advanced positions, re positions report looks like. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Um, you know, what do, does this information mean um, and where is it coming from? So that's what we're gonna take a little bit deeper dive and talk about each of these columns in the report. So again, you know, positions listed on this report are, um, you know, not common. Um, and it all comes down to the work days not equaling the days worked as of June 30th. So, you know, you can see here um, in the sample that we have, um, those, those days do not equal, um, thus they're on the report. And again, going back to if you have, you know, all of your teachers or a good bulk of um, your staff that's on the report, and it should, they should not be, now is the time to catch those. So hopefully if the district has a, a pay remaining in June, um, the easiest and simplest way to correct that is to go in and add those work days on that, those job calendars that, that, that are being affected um, on non-work days. So maybe um, weekends um, or, you know, if it's in June, um, probably they're, you know, teachers are already done with um, fulfilling their contracts. So you could add those work days to any um, non work day within that pay period um, you're going to be processing in June. Process the payroll, post, you know, post the payroll, then go back into that job calendar and remove those days. Um, keep in mind that the work days. Um, are not reported on the per pay um, file that gets sent to STRS. We do include those on the per pay report as a you know easy way to check those um, throughout the, the school year instead of you know at the end trying to figure out where the problem lies. So you know even if if the days would get are listed on the report themselves, they are not included on the per pay submission file that goes to STRS. Um, at this time, okay, those get included as um, part of the advance that we're gonna that we're talking about this morning. So what that does is um, it's going to go out then, and it's going to update. Adding those work days to the calendar are going to update the employees' days worked, the amount earned, and then which obviously affects the amount due or the accrued wages. So that's going to correct all of those fields on the compensation um, by just adding those you know, work days to the job calendar and processing a payroll. Unfortunately, if, you, um, if a district does not have any remaining pays, um, that's why we encourage them to run this so early you know, in June, um, they will have to add compensation adjustments um, for those employees affected or use the mass load program to mass load those adjustments um, so that those um, fields get updated for um, uh, and they get advanced um, correctly. Lori, question. Yes. So if we have districts that don't really want to add the days to the calendars just for record keeping purposes, I suppose, is there a template or does anybody out there have like a template or would you just suggest going to the, um, you know, going to the grid and just pulling down a uh, report from there to actually upload? Yeah, let me, let me work on a, a template for you, um, Carolyn, that we can easily come up with something um, to help you, um, pull those. I do know that it will be nice when, um, these reports are, um, we're able to run the reports in like CSV format or, um, Excel data, those kind of things. Cause then we could probably easily use these reports, um, yes. them down and then use those reports to load them, load those in. Um, that will be coming. Um, unfortunately, it's not done for this fiscal year. Um, but let me let me work on getting a template. And what I'll do is um, I will place it on the our trainings page. Um, where Perfect. I'll put, where I'll put this um, PowerPoint. And there's a few other things we're going to talk about that I'll place out there as well. And then I'll also um, put that out in our. Um, 
uh, the mass change, there's like a repository where we have mm -hmm. all of that information. I'll put it out there as well. Okay. Let me Perfect. Make, Thank you. Sure. Let me make a quick note of, so to load those. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, so then, you know, as we go from left to the right on the report, you can see then that, you know, we talked about the days already, um, the contract obligation that's coming from the compensation, um, as well as the amount due, um, you know, that's coming from the accrued wage field. <clears throat> so if you have questions about where those figures are actually pulling from, um, that's kind of, you know, what we're going to go through this morning, and hopefully you can reference back to this and um, that will clear up any confusion. So just some things to think about. Um, and as, a, as we've had questions come in um, that are, you know, common, I, I'm going to try to keep updating um, this so that, you know, it will kind of cover all the common areas that and questions that, um, that, that you guys have brought to our attention. You know, why would a compensation not be advancing? Um, other, you know, the days not matching, um, archive compensation. So they are not included on the advanced positions report. Um, also, if a compensation has a stop date, that will prevent the compensation from advancing. So it will not be on the advanced positions report. It will, however, be on the advanced fiscal year to date report. So um, those compensation dates, you know, come into play and a stop date is going to prevent the, the compensation from advancing. So just some areas to, you know, consider um, if you're, you know, helping a district figure out, you know, why something might not be advancing outside of the days. Next is the advanced positions report. So this is, you know, um, the amount that's gonna be um, sent to STRS um, over those summer pays um, as contributions. So what our hope is, is that, you know, when we, when the district submits their um, annual submission file, the advanced amount that's listed on that report matches what's been what actually gets reported um, on all of those various per pay reports. So what was reported matched what was withheld and all is good. Okay, so that's kind of you know the premise behind the, the report. Um, so what has to happen in order for um, an employee to appear on the advanced positions report? They, again, must have a position um, with the retirement code set to STRS, and the position status must be um, active or, or inactive. And it's actually the job status field, so I have that in the, the presentation. So that's the field it's looking at. Um, it also must have a contract compensation date range that falls within the current date. We talked about that already. Um, the days worked must equal the work days um, as of June 30th. So, um, you know, that non-advanced report, the days are not equaling and that's why they're on the report. In this case, they do equal. The um, contract work days and contract days worked must be greater than zero. So if, you know, those are zero for whatever reason, they will not appear on the advanced positions report. Um, there also has to be um, pays remaining. So the, the pays in contract has to be less than the pays paid. And then there also has to be a remaining amount to be paid. So the system is taking the contract obligation minus the amount paid minus the amount docked and that amount must be greater than zero. Um, just one thing to keep in mind um, that, again, having a stop date um, within that academic date range will prevent the compensation from advancing. 
So here's just a snippet then of what um, the report, you know, looks like. And again, you know, we're going to talk about each column and where those figures are coming from. Um, so when it comes to credit, um, this, you know, is actually determined by on the payroll item, um, the 450 payroll item, there is a full and a part-time field. So this field here is telling um, the system basically what decision tree to, to follow, what branch on the decision tree to follow. Um, are they considered a part-time employee or a full-time employee? Employees with 120 days or more are going to will receive 100% credit. Um, and then those that have less than 120 days, um, it uses the um, STRS decision tree. So um, I have the link here um, to STRS's website um, that, that um, will take you then to that deci decision tree. So if you have um, districts that have questions about you know, why the percentage of credit is what it is, you know, this could be helpful in determining, um, you know, where, how that falls and how it's being calculated. Just a, a reminder that re-employed retirees will always have zero percentage of credit. So there is, you know, that that's a STRS requirement. Um, so if there is calculated service credit, for a rehired retiree, it will flag a warning um, that they, those um, that are flagged as a rehired re retiree should always be um, have zero listed as credit. Um, another area to look at as far as why an employee might show zero percentage of credit, do the attendance records have pay dates? So these are required for the days to be counted. Um, the exception are docs. Um, docs use the activity date. So not the pay date, um, but the activity date. Okay. So moving you know, across the report then, the contract amount due, um, that's calculated by taking the obligation minus the amount paid minus the amount doc. So again, what's owed to the employee, what will be paid over those summer months. The advanced employee amount, um, most of the um, districts in the state of Ohio um, are withholding this as an annuitized type of retirement. Um, so for, I'm gonna go out and say all, um, that might be a bold statement because there might be an exception, but um, this should really be zero. Um, there aren't, you know, many, if any, um, districts that withhold this after tax. Um, so this column here should always be zero. The advanced pickup column, however, um, because it's an annuitized type of retirement, this is where um, the system is totaling then the amount of contributions that are gonna be withheld over the summer months. The system actually does this on a per pay basis. So <clears throat> here in this example, the employee's obligation um, is $81,613. Their per pay amount is $3,138.96 and they've been paid 21 pays out of 26. So on a per pay basis, the system is taking and it's gonna um, calculate the contributions for the 22nd pay, the 23rd pay, the 24th pay, the 25th pay. And then finally, it's doing a little bit extra when it comes to the 26th pay for the rounding. So it's got it on that last pay, it takes the obligation minus the amount paid, minus the amount docked. In this case, there's it's zero. The remaining amount then to be paid, instead of it being $3,138.96, it actually is $3,139. So that pays off their contract, you know, to the penny times 14%. So you can see here, it's you know 
because of that rounding, it's calculating a slightly different amount for the contributions of that last pay. So then the advanced pickup amount becomes all of the, the remaining pays added together. So in this case, um, this employee's advanced amount is $2,197.26. Okay. The total advanced amount then, um, or total amount advanced, is the combination of these two columns added together. So again, this should be zero. So it's really, you know, the, the total amount that's that we just calculated in the um, prior slide. And then lastly um, is the rehired retiree column. Um, so as mentioned before, there are um, a couple flags that control um, whether this column is set to yes or no. And that's um, the rehired retiree checkbox and the rehired um, date on the 450 payroll items. So in order for this to be flagged correctly, there are two parts and these two parts work together and they have to be you know, checked and then the date has to be supplied in order for it to be reported correctly. Hmm. What can happen is, um, you know, you might see times where there might be two lines um, listed on the report. Um, I think I have a slide talking about that later. Um, so it is possible that maybe the employee was just a regular employee for part of the year, and then they were hired as a rehired retiree for the remainder of the school year. And so, you know, in that case, it's okay for an employee to have two lines on the report. One would be flagged as with an N, and then um, one would be flagged as a Y. Again, the credit would be listed as zero um, for the rehired retiree line. Uh, if these flags don't get set correctly, <clears throat> excuse me, at the start of the school year, then um, that's when uh, we have to do some kind of adjustments um, to, to get this corrected and move all of those amounts from the regular employee to actually being a rehired um, employee. And I, again, I have a, a slide um, talking about that later and I got ahead of myself. Um, the totals at the bottom then of the advanced position report, um, you know, it's actually just totaling then all the amounts um, from those individual figures that we just talked about. So again, this is the total amount of the employee's advance. This is the total amount for, you know, the remainder amount of, of the employee's um, contracts. Um, I did. Um, put together um, a report definition um, that might help districts balance. Everybody has their own, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little tickle. Every district has their own method to balancing these totals. Um, some, you know, have a master spreadsheet that they're keeping track of, you know, all of their regular um, employees, you know, even certified, classified, broken down by pay groups, et cetera. So they have a spreadsheet that they're, you know, able to, um, you know, pull up easily and say, hey, this is the amount, you know, that's owed the remaining amount of everybody's contract. So that should match, match the contract amount due. Um, likewise, then the, um, you know, remaining amount that's owed to them, you know, times 14%, um, that's going to be the pickup amount. And they're able to balance that pretty easily. Um, if you have a district that, you know, doesn't have something in place and they're wanting something, um, again, I am going to place this report definition um, in the two places I talked about earlier. Um, but a spreadsheet then can be used and here's an example of just a couple employees um, that once the report definition is imported and, and processed, what the report looks like. So it has, you know, basically all the information right from that compensation screen 
pulled into a report. And all I did was add these three columns out here to the right. Um, you can see those are bolded, so you can you know easily pick those out. And you can easily do a formula on the columns that you've you know pulled in um, from that report definition. So the remaining number of pays, you know, obviously that's the contract and pays minus the pays paid. And then the amount due um, is the pay per period times then the remaining number of pays. That, that, that figure here should then equal um, the accrued wages within cents. Um, this isn't doing the rounding, but if you have, you know, eight cents, 10 cents, you know, within reason, um, you know then that this employee's compensation is set up correctly. And then the total of um, this column V here should be within reason um, of your advanced positions report. Um, you can even take this, you know, one step further then and, you know, take this times 14%, make that another column. I didn't think about that. And that would be your advanced amount. So again, just to start, every district does this so differently. So it's hard to, you know, say this is always how it should be done, um, but just something to throw at you to maybe help them um, provide some sort of um, means to, to balance that if they if they don't already have something in place. The last report then is the advanced fiscal year to date report. Um, so this is everybody. So not just those employees that are advancing, but these are everybody that contributed throughout the school year um, to STRS. So again, the criteria um, does sort of mimic the advance um, positions report, um, but they're, the earnings piece comes into play. So we have, um, you know, positions have to have a retirement code set to STRS. Um, they have to have earnings within the current fiscal year. And we've outlined, you know, what, how those earn earnings um, are, are gathered. So for an advancing compensation, the accrued wages will be added to the earnings. Um, then adjustment journals with the type of total gross um, that are that pertain to the STRS payroll item um, with a transaction date within the fiscal year are also added. And then the applicable gross of any historical um, STRS payroll items paid to the employees for the payrolls within the fiscal year are added. So it kind of breaks down then, you know, how the system is calculating the earnings. Um, so if you have questions about those, you know, step through those three bullets and, and hopefully that will be helpful. One thing to keep in mind that an employee has to have a contract compensation. Again, we've talked about this before, that has a date range that falls within the current date and the pays paid is not equal to the pays in the contract or the compensation has been paid in the fiscal year or the employee must have a non-contract compensation with a date range that falls within the fiscal year. So I know that's a lot of like and ors, um, but if you know a district has questions as to why um, somebody may or may not be appearing on the report, you know, kind of follow this um, bullet here, and hopefully that will help um, you know figure out where the the problem lies. So again, remember that the, the, um, the compensation has to have um, a stop date. If I'm sorry, if a, a compensation has a stop date that falls within the academic date range, it's gonna prevent that employee from advancing like we talked about before, but they are gonna appear on the advanced fiscal year to date report. So because they have earnings, um, and contributions, they will be listed on the report. So again, um, just going left to right, as far as you know, breaking down the report a little bit, um, we've talked about credit, get my cursor going here. Um, you know, it's the same as, as what we've discussed on the advanced positions report. 
Um, remember, those rehire retirees can be a little tricky. Um, so those, you know, they always will receive um, zero credit um, unless they, you know, came throughout the school year, um, rehired and retired, you know, in, in the same year. When it comes to the days, um, it's actually the system is, is doing multiple um, checks here. It's going to count the days from the compensation, um, the job calendar that the compensation is pointing to. Then it's going to add those attendance records. Remember, the pay date is required. It will add absence days. Again, remember the pay date's required um, or the activity date, again, is what's used for docs. And then it will add or subtract the core adjustment records with the type equaling STRS retirement days and those that have a transaction date within the fiscal year. Um, so if there's questions about, you know, how it's coming up with the, the number of days that are being reported on the report, um, kind of, you know, this can be your go-to and you just kind of go down the line and, and go through those four bullet points and hopefully um, that helps clear up um, any confusion there. When it comes to earnings, um, the system is actually um, finding the remaining amount to be paid um, on the compensation record. And again, we talked about this before, um, it's calculated by taking the obligation minus the amount paid minus the amount docked. Then from the 450 payroll item, it's gonna find the fiscal year to date gross amount. And then lastly, it finds any adjustments pertaining to the 450 payroll item with the type equaling the total gross. And again, those transaction dates have to be, you know, within the fiscal year. I did add a little blurb at the bottom. Um, if, you know, the employee has that increased compensation checkbox box marked on the 450 record, um, then it's actually going to add that um, calculated inflated gross to the earnings. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. That was earnings. Okay, the next column is the non-taxed deposit slash pickup column um, for this. Um, it goes out and it finds the amount withheld on the 591 and 691 um, for each payroll and then adds any adjustments um, with the payroll item type being 591, I'm sorry, the payroll item code being 591 or 691 and the type equaling amount withheld or the board's amount, oh, looks like I have a typo there, sorry, board amount um, of a payroll item, again, with a transaction date within the fiscal year. Okay. The non-taxed advanced amount, again, we talked through this calculation when we talked about, you know, balancing that advanced um, positions report. So again, it's going through and it's calculating this on a per pay basis for the, the remaining number of pays, calculating that final pay amount, you know, times 14% and adding what's already been withheld to the remaining number of pays to arrive at that final figure. Okay, so it's not a straight, I know a lot of times people get confused and, you know, oh, this is the amount um, that's remaining to be paid to them. Um, take that times 14%. And that's, you know, can cause those rounding differences because the system is actually calculating that on a per pay basis. Um, the non-taxed total then um, is the, the amount, um, the uh, non-tax deposit pickup amount plus the non-tax advanced amount. So those two added together. Um, are the actual, you know, amount that's going to be uh, <clears throat> uh, sent to um, STRS and the amount they've already received. When it comes to, again, that rehired retiree um, checkbox, we've already talked about this, but just to reiterate, those flags are on the 450 payroll, um, payroll item. 
And again, those two work together. So if one gets marked and the other's forgotten, um, it's not gonna accurately be reported on um, any of the reports. The total section at the bottom, um, you know, again, where's where's this information coming from? So we've kind of broken these out in, in each section. Um, the non-taxed earnings, um, these are coming from the fiscal year-to-date gross amounts from the pay, 450 payroll items plus the accrued wages. So what's left to be paid. The non-taxed advanced um, amount, that's the retirement amount that's going to be withheld over the summer pay. So the amount that we just talked through um, as far as the advanced positions report. So that's the amount that hasn't been sent. Um, to STRS that will be sent um, as it's being withheld um, over those summer pays. The taxed earnings, um, again, this section is, is not common because, um, you know, districts withhold those amounts as um, an annuitized type of um, payroll item. So these typically should all be zeros um, in that tax section. The taxed in the non tax section, um, or that amount is the amount then that's been paid to STRS during the fiscal year, plus the advanced amount. Um, so districts have all kinds of ways of um, balancing this as well. Um, you know, they can easily pull a report um, from, you know, the payments grid um, to, to gather the information that's been paid to STRS. Um, when it comes to the um, employee share and you know capture those payments some keep track of it on a per pay basis you know from those payables reports as they're processing those um, they could even grab them now from those payables reports go back out to the file archive grab those totals um, you know place them in a, a spreadsheet and, and balance those so again the amount of the payments that have been already paid to STRS um, they do want to keep in mind that, you know, this is including the um, pickup um, for those that have their retirement paid by the board. So you would need to go then to the USAS side, you know, and grab those 691 totals um, for the board um, employee share that's being paid by the board. So it's going to, you know, include both of those figures or both of those amounts. Again, um, the advanced amount is that amount that's going to be withheld over those summer pays. Um, and then the retirement, the regular, I'm sorry, retirement pickup amount. So, you know, you can see over here on the right hand side, this, the report actually breaks it down between the re retired um, amounts and then the regular amounts. So, right here, you can see that the regular amount. Um, is the figure here, and that's not quite, you know, equaling this figure up here, and that's because we would need to add the regular and the retiree together. So in order to balance um, that figure, you would have to take the, the taxed um, plus non-taxed minus the employee pickup amount um, to, to get that um, figure to, to balance out. The next column then, um, the first section of figures is the non-tax deposit pickup amount. And again, these are the, the payments that are, have been made to um, STRS for the 591 and um, the 691 for the fiscal year. And then the non-taxed amount um, is again that um, advanced amount. So you can see that you know the non-taxed amount here um, equals the, the figure here that we just talked about. And again, these tax sections, um, you know, those should typically be zero because districts are not um, taxing. The retirement's not withheld on a tax basis. It's withheld before taxes. And then the last section is the retiree amount. So again, based on those, the way that those flags that we've already talked about, on the 450 payroll item are checked and the, the date that's entered, um, it's gonna capture those amounts separately um, as re retired amounts. And those figures will be in the retired um, section 
um, highlighted here on the screen. Okay. All right. Are there any questions about any of those three reports that we talked about? Um, again, I know it's it's um, not really exciting because you're kind of just going through um, and picking apart the reports themselves, but hopefully it's helpful, you know, to be able to reflect back to and know, okay, this, this amount is coming from where, um, and you can look at the information that we've provided this morning and um, know, okay, I need to, you know, go here to look for this specific total. Um, this is where those figures are pulling from and so forth. So not, not too exciting stuff, I know that, but um, hopefully you'll find it helpful. Okay, are there any questions before I move on? Doesn't look like it. I did wanna point out um, that coming on the 6.94 release, um, our um, performance improvements to the three reports. Um, so very, very soon, um, the advanced uh, fiscal year to date report um, they've, the developers have improved that by 80%, the advanced positions report by 90%, and the non-advanced position report by 75%. So um, for those that remember last year and, you know, these reports, you know, taking a little bit of time to run, I know that the develop, developer said for, you know, larger districts, some of these were taking like um, five to seven minutes. Um, and that's down to under a minute, um, you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds and so forth. So hopefully, um, you know, because they're running those re these reports so frequently until everything um, is balanced and, and um, they're ready to create the submission file, um, these improvements, performance improvements for, uh, will be super helpful. Just some like common areas, common questions that we receive that you probably receive that um, I thought I would, you know, kind of go through and help um, decipher, you know, what the system's looking at, maybe areas to, to reference back to, to, to point you in the right direction. Rehired retirees, kind of talked about this earlier, you know, why is an employee not appearing as a rehired retiree? make sure both of those fields are populated that we talked about, the date and the checkbox. Why are they uh, uh, appearing twice? Again, I think I touched upon this earlier. Um, if they're you know, rehired during the same fiscal year, then they will be, you, they, the district will want these um, to be reported on two separate lines. If they missed, um, you know, checking those box, checking that box and adding the date, um, then, they will appear as two lines on the report, um, but they really should only be one. Um, so what will need to happen is um, an adjustments. Um, so go to core adjustments and you'll use the type of um, portion of the fiscal to date board amount that was earned as a rehired retiree and or the portion of the fiscal year to date amount that was well withheld as a rehired uh, retiree and or the portion of the fiscal year's date gross that was earned as a rehired retiree. So there's three different um, adjustments that can be added, you know, based on if the employee has, you know, their uh, retirement picked up by the board um, or just, you know, withheld um, from their uh, check. So there are three types then, um, and that will basically, you know, cancel out those amounts that were withheld as um, a regular employee, and they will then be um, just, you know, uh, listed on the report with one line. Okay. Back post. So, um, you know, sometimes districts pay um, stipends or summer school or um, in July, and those really, um, you know, need to be applied to last fiscal year. Um, so any kind of back posting that needs to happen, um, districts will want to go to core adjustments. And these are the various um, screens then that they um, would want to use um, to make those corrections. So 
you know, again, if the employee has the pickup part, um, you know, they would add the 691. If they do not, then they would just be adding the 450 and the 591. Or if they have partial, obviously they would need partial pickup, they would need all three. Okay, so just to give you a, a highlight then of um, the various uh, types, um, total gross, amount withheld, board's amount of a payroll item. Okay. Docs. Um, docs can be tricky. And obviously, um, if you if a district knows about these ahead of time and they have pays remaining, remember that they can put these um, payments in future uh, using the doc pay type. Um, once then the STRS advanced submission files process, they can actually remove those um, doc payments from future. Um, and then, you know, obviously place those back in the future at the appropriate time. But the system is smart enough to look at those payments in future with the doc pay type um, and include those in their the calculations for, for that employee. So if they know of these ahead of time, you know, we strongly encourage those to be placed, um, you know, before the submission file is created. Um, again, then that takes, um, you know, into, that will be taken into consideration and and they're um, hopefully the advanced amount for that employee will be accurate then. So um, question again there, Lori, sorry about yes. that. Sorry no, 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 no. So on those um, entries there in future pay, does there need to be an effective date in there or do they just put it in? Just, just put it in without an effective date. So you're just okay. putting those, you know, pay types in with the amount, um, no effective date. And then um, when they run their STRS, um, reports and obviously, you know, create their submission file, those those calculations will be accurate. Um, so, you know, think about um, for those that docs might be confusing, if those docs aren't placed in um, future ahead of time and taken into consideration, you know, an employee is being um, included in that submission file as one amount. And now that amount over the summer months when the stock happened has changed. So, um, in the end, um, after the summer pays have been processed, you know, that employee in particular is not going to balance and there will be a, a difference or a discrepancy um, that will need to be reported to STRS. So if we know about those ahead of time, we can get those, you know, included in the process and um, they'll be, you know, they'll balance at, at the end of the, the summer. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lori, just to piggyback on that same question, sure. if they have a certain amount that they want to dock each pay for um, several pays during the summer because they want to stretch it out, um, if they would put the effective date on it, the advance wouldn't pick it up if the effective date was after June 30. Is and, that correct? And I don't even think, Mary, um, I'll, I could double check, but I don't think effective dates I don't think the advance picks it up at all. So that's we, okay. So we don't want to put an effective date in there at all. Yeah, just okay. keep that blank. And, you know, unfortunately, you'll have yeah. to come back out if they want to dock them, you know, at a later time and in multiple um, increments. Um, but we want to. Okay. So I have, a, I have a district that they have got someone who's retiring and their days overlap. Um, the last payroll here in June, and then also into the first payroll in July. So should I just tell them to, because they're going to of course run their last payroll in June. So they need to pull in those days that um, they're going to be docking for that last pay. And then in between the time of them processing that last payroll and then doing the advance, they need to put that additional few days or whatever it is for that first pay in July out there, right? Absolutely. You're exactly okay. absolutely Good. correct. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you. And you're welcome. Yeah. Those can be super tricky, but it is helpful if you know, you know, if districts can think ahead and, and know what's going to be, what's happening over the summer months to put those docs in there now. Um, otherwise, you know, it's not, there's not, a lot of harm done. It's just know that they're not going to balance um, when it comes to, you know, the, the, um, you know, after all those summer pays are over, there's going to be a discrepancy. 
Um, and if that's the, the amount they're off, you know, they know exactly who it is or who those employees are, it's okay. They're going to report those differences to STRS or STRS is going to reach out to the district and say, hey, you know, it, it, we, we didn't balance here and, you know, we'll correct it on the, the STRS side and then correct it on the system side, which we'll talk about here in a minute and, and all as well. So, um, but it is helpful. And I know, you know, most districts like to see that that advanced balanced at the end of the, the summer months and, um, you know, breathe a sigh of relief and then move on. So, okay. Um, where I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, so if there, if the doc is not um, known ahead of time and that happens, um, things come up, um, then as I mentioned before, there will be a difference in that STRS advanced configuration screen, which we'll go over here in a second. Um, the district will report that difference to STRS or STRS is gonna reach out to them and say, hey, there's, there's a problem here. Um, you know, the district verifies that that amount is accurate. So it's fixed on the STRS side. Now we need to fix it on the system side. So again, that's where we need to go back to that back posting um, uh, screenshot and, um, you know, make sure that if it's falling into next fiscal year, we don't want it to affect the following fiscal year. So, you know, we have to kind of think through the process here um, when it comes to what, what was done on the STRS side, what needs done on the system side. And then we'll go through here some screenshots. Um, you know, you, the district will need to be taken out of that um, STRS advanced mode um, by unchecking the STRS advanced configuration box. And then, um, you know, going to the compensation screen, make sure that there's no, um, that that employee or those employees are not still in the advance. Um, and there is a, a report definition um, that we have out on the wiki. And I think it's even out on our um, fiscal year end um, meeting page um, under the USPS section. Um, that definition is there um, that can be imported, downloaded, and then imported to basically take those um, compensations that are still flagged in the advance out of the advance. So you're, they're good going forward. Okay. Position numbers. We ran into this a lot last year. So I just wanted to, to point out, um, please, if districts are wanting to change position numbers for employees that are in advance. First of all, I know it happens, but try to use that with caution um, and do not create new payroll items and assign them at that position level. The employee is not going to advance correctly and it causes a whole, um, you know, a whole issue. Um, so please, you know, first of all, caution them in changing position numbers for employees that are in, in the advance. If they do, do not create position, new payroll items and assign them at the position level. Um, it, 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 causes, it causes headaches. So just a word of caution there. And then again, um, other things that might, you know, cause balancing issues are um, using pay types, we talked about doc, retro, termination, and payoff of accrued. Um, whoops, looks like I had a typo there. The, we, the districts can use those, just know that those are going to cause balancing issues as well. Um, if, you know, if a retro payment or a termination payment or a payoff of accrued um, is, is run through the payroll, those were not um, necessarily included in the STRS advance some annual submission file that was originally reported to SDRS. So again, um, can cause balancing issues. So what happens if a district, you know, they get all the way to the end of the summer, um, they've processed all those pays and, um, you know, they need to follow up and say, hey, um, did I balance or didn't I balance? So if you go to system configuration, 
the STS, STRS advanced configuration, this amount paid back should be zero. So if the amount paid back is equal to or greater than this advanced amount, then this figure becomes zero and the advanced mode is unchecked, okay? So if this box is still checked and there's a remaining amount, you know, in that amount paid back field, then know that the, this, you know, district did not balance and there's, there's issues. They're probably gonna get a message from STRS. Um, STRS is very helpful. Um, I've found in, you know, helping districts find discrepancies. So they really, you know, are there to help you and um, the districts, you know, shouldn't hesitate to, to reach out to them for help. Um, it is important, I put a reminder that someone either at the district level um, or the ITC level, check this. So after all the summer pays are processed, I know it's a job, um, you know, to, to place that on the ITC, you at the ITC. Um, so again, you know, encourage your districts to go back out after their summer pays are over. Um, this really does need to be, to, to be looked at. Um, we've had, you know, questions come in recently and, oh my gosh, the advanced flag is still set. Um, you know, probably we want to catch that a little sooner than now. Um, so, you know, after the summer pays are over, you know, add that to your checklist for your districts to go back out and check um, to make sure that there's, um, you know, they balanced. So. Hey, Lori. Yes. I'm sorry. This is Vicki from the Omen. Oh, don't um, be sorry. Can I just, can I back up and ask a quick question? Sure can. So we have a district that knows right now that they have an employee that's going to be changing job calendars. So they had put in a ticket yesterday asking that after they complete their final June pay, but before they do the advance, if they could go in and change the number of pays um, so that they pay off early so that they can start their new position. Um, and we had suggested to them that yes, they can do that, but they also need to change the compensation stop date um, because they, and they're gonna do this prior to creating their STRS advance. Mm -hmm. Is that the correct way to handle that? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that that would work if they're gonna process everything before their advance because everything's gonna be calculated. So when you say changing calendars, that's the only thing I'm worried about. The days are gonna be the I think the new the I think the new compensation is gonna go on the new job calendar. I mean, they gave us very little information. Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, my gut feeling is yes, that that sounds accurate. Okay. Uh, if you find out more information, Vicki, and you want us to look at it, like with this, with the details, I'd be happy, we'd be happy to do that. So just okay. when you find out a little more, we can run it through on our end, you know, do some testing and make sure that it's going to work, work. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like okay. to look at it before just saying yes, but I do think that what you, what you suggested and mentioned sounds, sounds accurate. Like, okay. That's what we thought too. And it just came to me as you were talking about sure. um, like paying off the accrued wages and that. Um, so sorry to backtrack no, you. No, 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 you're fine. Yeah, ask anything. You're, you're All good. right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so if the amount paid back is less than the advanced amount, then obviously we just talked about that advanced um, flag is gonna remain checked and there will be a remaining amount or uh, value in that amount paid back field. Um, so to isolate problems, um, one good tool that um, districts can use is the check STRS advanced report. Um, so you can, um, districts can run this and basically it's going out and it's grabbing um, individ by individual those amounts that were withheld over those summer pays. Um, so 
at the end, you know, what was reported on that annual report as the advanced amount should match what was withheld over the summer pays. Um, if there is any discrepancies, then those need to be reported to STRS um, as you know, prior year corrections. So those two reports can be used in conjunction you know, with each other, compared um, so that, th that you can you know, help the district narrow or the district can narrow down any problems. Um, I did um, take the check STRS advance template report that we have, um, and I took that um, one step further and um, it basically lists um, all of by employee, the current template report list. Um, it's just a listing of each employee and each amount um, where, um, you know, if we're going to compare totals, I think having the total by employee would be um, more helpful. So I actually created a new um, or updated check STRS advanced um, report definition. Again, I will place that out on the wiki um, so that, that everybody has that. Um, but then you can basically compare apples to apples. So if the advanced um, payment report said, you know, for this employee, the advanced amount should be one figure and what was sent over the summer months on the check STRS advanced report is another, then we know this is part of, you know, this is one employee that, that caused our balancing problem, okay? Um, do keep in mind that the check STR advance report uses pay period dates. So when that report is generated and those dates are entered, remember to use the first period beginning date for that summer pay and then find the last summer pay and use that um, period ending date as when you're entering the date range. Now that does get a little tricky um, and you have to remember it's using the pay period dates, not pay dates. Um, we do have a feedback issue and I did um, include that here um, to actually update that report to use pay dates um, instead. So um, just something I wanted to point out so that when you know districts get to that point and they're running that that report, um, you know they they get the accurate information. Um, keep in mind too that the amount paid back is calculated um, on the current year. So once the district, you know, after at the end of 2023 20, um, and it's January of 2024, if they go back into um, that configuration screen, the amount paid back is going to be zero. They might still have the checkbox marked saying that they're in the advance but the amount is gonna be paid back will be zero. And, and that gets confusing now as well. Um, we've had questions on, hey, why is the checkbox still marked, but the amount paid back is zero? That doesn't make sense. It's because once we roll into the next calendar year, that amount paid back is always gonna be cleared or set to zero, but that advanced checkbox, you know, it doesn't touch that box so that will, that can still be checked if the um, district wasn't taken out of the advance last year. Okay. All right. And just, you know, to reiterate again, um, if the, the dis district does not balance and once they find those discrepancies, it is important that um, you, you know, the districts go back to um, core adjustments and we need to back out then or you know, whatever was reported to STRS needs to be reported on, the, on our system um, so that those figures don't roll into the next fiscal year or fiscal year 24, and they're gonna have problems balancing then. So again, just you know, anything you're doing with or the districts are doing with STRS, make sure they're thinking about the system side and making those same corrections you know, if need be on, on, on our end. Again, if the district needs to be taken out of the advance because they didn't balance, just keep in mind, you know, 
um, you you would go in then and that system configuration um, select the STRS advanced configuration option and then we're going to uncheck that advanced mode checkbox. If you go to the compensation screen then and you filter um, the grid on um, that STRS advanced column equaling true, if there are, you know, if nothing is listed um, and everything is set to false, then nothing further needs to be done. Every all the compensations have been taken out of the out of the advance and, and they're good. Um, if there are um, compensations that are still marked in the advance that need to be taken out, um, that's where you're going to download that STRS advanced definition dash false. Um, report definition, download that, import it, and then run that um, to take all of those um, compensations out of the advance. Okay. All right. Are there any questions before we go with just a few follow-up items that I had? I know we're past our time and I apologize. Okay. So just some things that I wanted to make sure that you're aware of for this year rolling into next year. Um, and that being that districts can no longer run July pays without their annual submission file being created. Um, we had so many problems with this last year, and I'm sure that you remember that very vividly. Um, and it's very, very difficult. Um, and a lot of time and effort is consumed to try to get all those pieces sorted out and figured out and get the district on the right track. So to eliminate all of that, um, they're no longer gonna be able to run their first pay in July without their submission file being created. And that is due to a new checkbox that's on the STRS advanced configuration screen. So you can see here, there's a checkbox that says verify organization is in advanced mode for July pays. This box by default is, our, is checked. So when the enhancement was made, um, this checkbox is marked for all the districts and really it should not be touched. Um, the only exception is those few districts that do not um, process the advance. Um, so they, instead of um, withholding STRS um, the normal way, <laughs> they actually um, withhold it on um, earnings and not contributions. So um, in that case, for those very, very, very few districts, this checkbox is would need to be unchecked. Um, but again, probably not common, probably don't want to touch it unless you know there's a reason. Um, if districts do um, run their first July pay and that advanced submission file has not been created, they're going to get an error um, and it will not let them go any further saying running a, they're running a payroll in July before running the STRS advance and they are stopped in their processing. Okay. And here's what I just touched upon that if the district is withholding um, based on contributions, I may have said that backwards, I'm sorry, contributions and not earnings, um, you know, for those very, very few districts, that checkbox, you know, would you would want that unchecked. Um, there is a question, is this checkbox? Uh, yes, um, Vicki, I'm, I am almost 100% sure that that got changed. Um, I will double check on that, but um, great question because I know that was brought up right away when um, this was implemented and I'm almost positive that that got um, changed right away. I will follow up though and make sure and my thinking is correct and I will let you know. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, just another, you know, I, I'm sure you're all aware of STRS's website, but 
Um, they do have some very helpful um, uh, information out on their website. So I've put, I've placed the link here. I don't, I was gonna show you that, but we're way past the time. So um, under the employer section, they have, um, you know, some workshops that they provide. They have annual reporting workshop um, where they talk about um, the employer's responsibilities and they even talk about, um, you know, state software at the very end. Um, so, you know, encourage your districts to, you know, go out there, use those resources that they're providing. Um, they are, they're very educational. Um, and then lastly, you know, the STRS advanced chapter in, in the documentation, we've really tried to um, put a lot of detail and balancing tools and um, this information that we talked about this morning um, in the documentation as well. So um, that can be another resource if, if you're needing some additional information. All right, are there any questions? Um, I know that, again, I it's kind of a very boring topic. Um, so I apologize for all of the, um, you know, monotony of, of this morning, but hopefully um, you can, again, I'll post this PowerPoint. Hopefully you can um, take that, you know, reference back to it if need be, if you're questioning where certain information is coming from. Um, you know, we're always here. So again, um, I wish all of you the very best fiscal year end um, and uh, the very best weekend. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Lori. you.